Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be embroidering wild aster, uh, specifically a type of aster called stiff aster. There's a lot of different varieties of this kind of wildflower. This is a very simple, straightforward tutorial. I think it's a great project for beginner embroiderers. And I decided I wanted to do a whole wildflower series for YouTube. It's kind of a great subject matter for beginner stitchers because flowers are a design that can be simplified for beginners. So I thought I would slowly cover this dress in a field of embroidered wildflowers, different kinds, as I share the different tutorials. If you prefer to practice this embroidery not on a garment, I recommend getting a small hoop, maybe something five to seven inches, and fitting some linen into it. You'll also need a needle that you feel comfortable using. I use cruel needles. I think they're about two and a half inches long, between two to two and a half inches. And you'll also need embroidery threads. Wild Aster could be a range of colors, blue, purple, pink, yellow. It's really whatever you want it to look like. It's essentially a daisy-like flower. So let's get started. I decided I'm going to start with the sleeve of the dress. I'm going to insert the lower part of the hoop into the sleeve and then secure it with the top portion. And I've secured my hoop so I can make a very simple drawing. I will be using pink micron, but you can use whatever you feel comfortable drawing with. If you have something that disappears, I know our importer sometimes prefers something like that. I'll start with the stock, which I'm going to draw a fairly straight line for and then draw two more lines that curve out. And I've left room up here for the heads of the flower. Next, I'll draw the centers of the flower, which in general is going to be a circle shape. I also drew it hovering a bit above the stem to keep room for the stitches that are going to be the petals. Last thing I'm going to do is draw the leaves. These are just thin elongated shapes and then slightly smaller ones as they get closer to the head of the flower. Cool. So now we can start stitching. I've got a needle here. I've got something to cut the threads with. Let me grab my threads. All right, I have yellow for the centers. I have a couple shades of green for the leaves and the stem. It might be hard to tell the difference, but yeah, these are slightly different. And then a pale purple bluish thread for the flower petals. I like to start with the green parts. For the stem of this, I am going to reduce the threads from being six strands to being three strands just by splitting it in half. And the stitch I'm gonna do is called a ladder stitch. I'll start at the bottom. What I'm gonna do is make a short stitch but come backwards and then continue doing that up the stem. Okay, once I come to the top up here, I'm going to knot off my thread and then cut it. I'm going to do two knots since the thread is very thin. That's a little bit more secure. And now I'm going to do the same thing for these lines in one continual line. I'm gonna tie it off again in a knot and now we can get started on the leaves. I'll be using this slightly lighter shade of green and I'm gonna keep all six strands so it's gonna be a little bit thicker but I like that difference in texture. I'm going to do short angled stitches. I believe the name for this is a satin stitch. I'm coming in on an angle and just doing short little lines that fill in this shape that we drew. It's a little bit tedious, but it's great practice for getting into some more intermediate embroidery. If you feel like a pro at doing a satin stitch, you can do pretty much anything. 
All right, so that's the first leaf. And now I'm going to fill in the rest of these in the same exact way, starting right here. I'm actually gonna try my best not to cut this thread. Like when I finish this leaf, I'm just gonna bring my needle up through the top of this leaf and then continue until I run out of thread. Next we're going to embroider the yellow centers. So for this I'm going to do a variation of a knot stitch or of a French knot, which I've never actually stitched a true French knot. Um, I think when I began embroidering I had seen French knots or knot stitches in pieces and really thought they were cool and I thought all it was to it was making a knot like this and then stitching down. I think the French knot, you kind of wrap the thread around twice rather than a single knot, but this is how I've been doing it pretty much for the last seven or eight years. So I've just continued to do knots this way where I'm making a knot as if I'm tying off my thread, but instead of cutting it, I just make a stitch until I fill, in, fill up this entire space with this kind of textured knot. So that's what I'm doing. I can look up how to do a French knot if anyone is interested and do a different video on that, but this has worked for me so far. So I continue doing it and um, it serves a nice purpose for the center of flowers to give it a little bit of a different look than the flat stitch, but you can also just fill in this kind of circular or oval shape with flat stitches the same way we did the leaves. So that's how that came out, and now I'm going to repeat that for these two. The centers are embroidered, we have all the leaves done. Now we can do the fun part, which is the petals. So I'll cut off a piece of this thread that I'm using for the petal colors. The way I'm going to do this is not going to be crazy precise. I'm just going to pick a spot from the center and radiate straight lines. I'm going to do two long stitches for each petal, like so. And then I'm gonna come back to the center here and then radiate a little bit outward. Do you see what I mean? Like so. I'm not totally sure if there's a number I'm supposed to be achieving, like how many petals are in a stiff aster or a regular aster flower, but just getting the idea that's what's fun about embroidery is it's not science and you are just creating sweet motifs. I mean, you can be as accurate as you want to be, but especially for beginner embroidery, I think just an impression of what the flower actually looks like is good enough for me. As you can see too, my stitch length kind of very. I'm not going to be too bothered about that. And there's our first flower. I'm going to tie a knot, cut it off, and then now I can repeat that for these two flowers. And there you have it. That's the finished flower tutorial for the Stiff Aster.
Once I finish embroidering something like this, I like to give it a nice iron so that these hoop marks go away. Yeah, that's the finished flower tutorial. I'll show you what the back looks like. This is what the inside looks like. I've been doing this a long time, so it's it's pretty effortless for me to keep that neat, but in the beginning, it's usually a bit messier if you're just starting out with embroidery. All right, everyone, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you try out the project. You can tag me on Instagram if you want to try out the uh, embroidered aster flower. Yeah, I'll be back again with more wildflowers and other videos. Let me know if you have a request for a flower to do on the dress. I have a ton of ideas, you know, I want to get to poppies and buttercups, ferns even. But yeah, uh, until then, thank you for watching. You can check out my shop, it's tessaperlo.com. I have a lot of hoops and sometimes clothes that I make and sell them there. I do have a patreon which i don't really post on but it's just a place for if you want to leave a tip to support me making these videos and maybe down the line i will figure out how to share videos on there <laughs> that's kind of the goal i just have to figure out how to be able to post a long form video on there and it's probably easier than i think and i just have to do some internet sleuthing so yeah i have my website i have a patreon it's five dollars obviously no pressure. And then uh, Instagram's Tessa Perlo. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.